Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of Riyadh Salahin, Volume 1. Okay. It's been highly educational. We've learned quite a lot about how to endure suffering, how to be a minimalist. We are now in a section that was titled Clemency, Tolerance, and Gentleness. Let's begin. Bismillah. Abu Yala Shadad bin Aus, may Allah be at peace with him, reported. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Verily, Allah has prescribed Ihsan, kindness, for everything. So when you kill, you must make the killing in the best manner. So, specifically that, like slaughtering, hunting, right? When you slaughter, make your slaughter in the best manner. Let one of you sharpen his knife and give ease to his animal in order to reduce his pain. Muslim. This one is really important to me because it points out how, yes, you can be a vegetarian, pescatarian, vegan, but you are not allowed to then say those who eat meat are doing a sin or we're evil or we have to eat bugs because you like the World Economic Forum, right? We get to eat meat, and we can do it in the best way. If you, at least in America, we have some labels called humane certified. And I try to always buy things that say humane certified. And a vegan psycho will say there's no such thing as a humane killing. And they're really irrational because they're trying to equate someone who does pasture-raised farming with factory farming, which totally different type of way of bringing up livestock and poultry and turkeys and whatnot. So if you buy Humane Certified, uh, that'll also help you as well, okay? Especially when it comes to chicken eggs and everything else. And if you have your own way of hunting and stuff, you can make sure that you do the best, quick, and easiest way you can. And so this reminds us that meeting, eating meat is perfectly fine. Aisha, may Allah be peace with her, reported, Whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, was given a choice between two matters, he would always choose the easier, as long as it was not sinful to do so. But, if it was sinful, he was most strict in avoiding it. He never took revenge upon anybody for his own sake. But, when Allah's legal bindings are outraged, he would take revenge for Allah's sake. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Ibn Masud, may Allah be peace with him, reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Shall I not tell you whom the hellfire is forbidden to touch? It is forbidden to touch a man who is always accessible, having polite and tender nature. at Wow, okay. So, accessible. Someone who makes themselves available to the people. Or at least approachable, I think is what's getting at. Commentary. This hadith throws a light on a kind bearing which is rooted in faith and saves man from the hellfire. The second lesson is that prior to discussing something important with somebody, we should make him attentive and receptive so that he may take interest and put faith in what we tell him. Oh, that's a good one right there. So, so prior to discussing something with someone, make them attentive and receptive. Help them to get interest and have faith in what you're saying. How do you go about making them attentive and receptive, though? That's the key. Chapter 75, Forgiveness of the Ignorant. Allah the Exalted says, Show forgiveness, enjoying what is good, and turn away from the foolish, how you don't punish them. 7, 199. So overlook, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, their faults with gracious forgiveness. 1585. Let them pardon and forgive. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? 2422. In pardon men, verily Allah loves al Musinun, the good doers. 3 134. And verily whosoever, whosoever shows patience and forgives, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah. 4243. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reported, 
I asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, Have you ever experienced a day harder than the day of the Battle of Uhud? He replied, Indeed, I experienced them, dangers, at the hands of your people, i.e., the disbelievers from amongst the Quraysh tribe. The hardest treatment I met from them was on the day of Aqaba when I went to Ibn Abd Yalil bin Abd Kulil, who was one of the chiefs of the Taif, with the purpose of inviting him to Islam. So he made no response to my call. So I departed with deep distress. I did not recover until I arrived at Karn Atha Alib. There I raised my head and saw a cloud which had cast its shadow on me. I saw it in Jibril Gabriel, and I'll be pleased with him, who called me and said, Indeed, Allah the Exalted heard what your people said to you, and the response they made to you, and he has sent you the angel in charge of the mountains to order him to do to them what you wish. The angel in charge of the mountains. Then the angel of the mountains called me, greeted me, and said, O Muhammad, Allah listened to what your people had said to you. I am the angel of the mountains, and my Rabb has sent me to you, so that you may give me your orders. I will carry out your orders. If you wish, I will bring together the two mountains that stand opposite to each other at the extremities of Mecca to crush them in between. But the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I rather hope that Allah will raise from among their descendants people as will worship Allah the One and will not ascribe partners to Him in worship, al-Bukhari and Muslim. Angel of the Mountains. It's the first time I read that hadith. That hints at that there are angels assigned to certain things. Aisha, may Allah be peace with him, reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, never hid anything with his hand, neither a servant nor a woman, but of course he did fight in the cause of Allah. He never took revenge upon anyone for the wrong done to him, but of course he exacted retribution for the sake of Allah, in case the injunctions of Allah about unlawful acts were violated. So, never hit anyone with his hand, neither a servant or woman. Anas, may Allah be peace with him, reported, I was walking with the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who was wearing a Najrani cloak with a very thick border when a Bedouin happened to meet him. He took hold of the side of his cloak and drew it violently. I noticed that the violence of the jerk had bruised the neck of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The Bedouin said, O Muhammad, give me out of Allah's wealth that you possess. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, turned to him and smiled, and directed that he should be given something, Abu Hari and Muslim. Commentary This hadith also highlights the Prophet's sublime morality, patience, and self-control. He smiled away the discourtesy of the Bedouin, and bade the offering of a gift to him. Smiled away the discourtesy of the Bedouin. That's hard to do, you know, that's not easy. So that's something to strive for. Whew. When someone isn't hospitable and is quite rude, it's, it can be a trial, right? To just allow them to be doing their shenanigans. Ibn Masood, may Allah be peace with him, reported, I can see the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him looked like one of the prophets of Allah whose people beat and made him bleed while he was wiping the blood from his face and supplicating, O oh Allah, forgive my people because they know not. Abu Hari and Muslim. That's interesting because it sounds a lot like what the Christians felt Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross. Abu Huraira, 
May well be pleased with him, reported. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The strong man is not the one who wrestles. The strong man is, in fact, the one who controls himself in a fit of rage. Whew. I've heard this one, and it is not easy to do. Not easy to do. And I think, uh, for us in our lives, there'll be a point where we definitely have some rage about us. Right? We're just like, Rah! especially when you're sleep deprived, or you like got some horrible news, you know, it, it can be quite a trial, quite a trial. Chapter 76, Endurance of Afflictions. Allah the Exalted says, those who repress anger and who pardon men, verily Allah loves al muhsinun the good doers. 3, 134, quote, and verily, whosoever shows patience and forgives, that would truly be from Allah the things recommended by Allah. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. A man said to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I have relatives with whom I try to maintain good relationship with, but they sever relations with me, whom I treat kindly, but they treat me badly. With whom I am gentle, but they are rough to me. He, peace be upon him, replied, If you are as you have said, then it is as though you are feeding them hot ashes, and you will not be without a supporter against them from Allah, as long as you do so. Muslim. So, the commentary essentially says that If you want to win the pleasure of Allah, essentially, you need to be forgiving and tolerant in regards to how you suffer at the hands of people. Chapter 77 Indignation Against the Transgression of Divine Laws Allah the Exalted says, quote, And whoever honors the sacred things of Allah, then that is better for him with his Rabb. 2230 if you help in the cause of Allah, He will help you and make your foothold firm. 47.7 Abu Masood Uqba bin Amr al-Badri, may Allah be peace with him, reported, A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, I join the morning salah late because of so-and-so who leads it and prolongs it. Abu Masood said, I have never seen the Prophet, peace be upon him, so angry while giving a speech, as he was on that day. He, peace be upon him, said, Some of you create hatred among the people against faith. Whoever leads Salah the prayer should make it brief, because the congregation includes old men and youngsters, and those who have some urgent work to do, Abu Hari and Muslim. Aisha, may Allah be peace with her, reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, returned once from a journey and saw a curtain which I had hung along a platform with some pictures on it. The color of his face changed. He tore it up and said, O oh, Aisha, the most tormented people on the day of resurrection are those who contend with Allah in the terms of creation. A Bihari and Muslim. Aisha, may I be peace with her, reported. The Quraysh were much worried about the case of Makhzumia, woman who had committed theft, and wondered who should intercede for her with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, so that she would not get punished for her crime. Some said Usama bin Zaid, now be peace with him, was his beloved, and so he may dare do so. So Usama, may I be peace with him, spoke to him about that matter. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, Do you intercede when one of the legal punishments ordained by Allah has been violated? Then he got up and addressed the people, saying, The people before you were ruined, because when a noble person amongst them committed theft, they would leave him. But if a weak person amongst them committed theft, they would execute a legal punishment on him by Allah. Were Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, to commit the theft, I would have cut off her hand, a Bukhari and Muslim. 
Now this is very true. Okay, so when a noble person commits something, as in an aristocrat, they often get the light escaping, right? But if it's a poor person, they get like a heavy hand. I think that points a lot to the American judiciary. I mean, our, our, our legal system is insane. The amount of corruption openly done by the elites, politicians and whatnot, is, is, is wild. Their tax evasions, their mismanagement of funds, all kinds of stuff that they don't get held accountable for. But someone will have a tiny zoning violation for something they built on their property and all of a sudden you have the government breathing down their necks. Anas, may Allah be at peace with him, reported, the Prophet peace be upon him noticed a spittle in the mosque in the direction of the Qibla. The signs of disgust were perceived on his face. Then he stood up and scraped it away with his own hand and said, when you stand in Salah, you hold communion with your Rabb, and he is between you and the Qibla. Let no one, therefore, cast out his spittle in that direction, but only to his left or under his foot. Then he caught hold of the corner of his sheet, spat into it, and folded it up and said, or he should do like this, a Buhari and Muslim. And we've also read that in Buhari and Muslim. Uh, so it's good to see it here as well. Um, also nice, mashallah, that I have memorized uh, the hadith. Not word for word, but the gist of it. That's why it's important to repeat hadith. Chapter 78. Obligation of rulers to show kindness to their subjects. Allah the Exalted says, and be kind and humble to the believers who follow you. 26 to 15. Verily, Allah enjoins al-adl, justice, and al-ihsan, performing duties in perfect manner, and giving help to kith and kin, and forbids al-fahsha, evil deeds, and al-munkar, all that is prohibited, and al-baqi, oppression. He admonishes you that you may take heed. 1690. Ibn Umar, may Allah be peace with him, reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, All of you are guardians and are responsible for your wards. The ruler is a guardian and responsible for his subjects. The man is a guardian and responsible for his family. The woman is a guardian and is responsible for her husband's house and his offspring. And so all of you are guardians, and we are responsible for your wards. And are responsible for your wards. Okay, so this one I liked because... Whenever you say you're a guardian as a woman, some people think you're making women masculine. But not necessarily, because... The, responsible for her husband's house. So you don't let in people... Who he doesn't want there. I would take it a step further though. You know. With all the home invasions. With the countless criminals we have. At least in California. There's extreme crime. Okay. Home invasions are very common. And you can look up the statistics. If the media even decides to report it. So Second Amendment. Helps women when they're trained educated, know the laws, right? They they did all the right work to put a cap in the cranium of a filthy criminal who breaks into their home. Because she is what? A guardian of the house, a guardian of the children. Lethal tools are necessary to guard property and to guard children. Okay. Doesn't make you masculine. Doesn't make you not feminine. It makes you fulfill your rights. Makes you have a sense of responsibility and accountability. Okay. I know there's some women who are complete morons. 
you know, they can't even tie their shoes right. They're very, very dumb. So, you know, maybe they're like that stupid duck that gets snatched up by the hawk because it doesn't know how to fly fast enough. But there are plenty of women, at least in America, for hundreds of years who protect their farms during the Civil War, right, the Revolutionary War against the Redcoats, and tons who protect their property now from illegals crossing the border and from gang members, okay? And when Black Lives Matter was doing their rioting and looting in mass, police officers stood down and people, uh, the Koreans especially, which was pretty awesome, stood on top of their businesses with AKs and protected their property. And lots of people had to protect their housing complexes because the rioters marched through neighborhoods, uh, flashing lights, banging on drums, and shooting off fireworks. And the police left the citizens on their own. So, also, if civil war breaks out in America, as a mom, if you lose your husband, you still got to protect his kids and your kids. A firearm is the number one way to do that. Now, if you live in a super safe area where there's a private police force or something, you got a helicopter to fly away and go to your private island, all right. But millions of women in America are in dangerous situations. Their husband isn't a superhero who can be all places at once. And a lot of criminals bust into houses, do carjackings and whatnot, and have stolen cars with children in the back, and have crashed into people uh, and killed the child passenger who was a hostage, and more. I mean, I pay attention to the crime stuff. And so, your job as a mama and as a wife is to protect the property and the family. And he's responsible for his family as well. But he's out there earning money in your home. That's why, you know, if you can move to a safe neighborhood, do it. But don't ever let your guard down. Because criminals can travel. We've had two child abductions very close within walking distance of where I lived. And I shared that with you in the past. So people can come around here and try to snatch kids away as they're coming home from school. You know, you gotta be careful. And there are lots of just filthy degenerate gang members. And in, let's take, for example, in Mexico. The cartels straight up snatch girls and R-word them, right? And not too many people have gun rights over there. So what can a husband do to protect himself? He'll go to jail for owning a firearm, but the cartel member has a firearm. And he'll R-word the woman right in front of the guy. Men are not allowed to actually protect their families. You know, so it's quite crazy. So this hadith really hits me hard because when you take that to heart, you recognize you have to be good. It's not just make the house look cute and smell like Febreze. I don't think of it like that. Or not having your friends over all the time for a tea party. I look at it as something more serious than that. You know, if your husband has a ranch... And you know that the cattle are out. Just take a walk around the perimeter. Make sure there's no holes. Like, check on things. Help them out. Don't just be inside, like, gluing on your ugly fake eyelashes and your nails and think, like, everything's his job while you just get to live your best life. No. So I take this one to heart. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's been a quite enlightening section. And such a potent hadith book that so many believers need to read so if you don't have time to read it at least you're hearing me read it to you while you're driving you know while you're doing things and whatnot and uh, if you'd like to join my blog it's www.subscribestar.com slash mahonakai hope to see you there